close to having this power station up and running. Getting there. Our power plant can have 96 tiles. Currently, this room has 78. So it's 76 minus 3, so 73. So I could actually make it a little bigger, but this is all I need for a hydrogen power plant. Uh, I am going to need to run some automation wire from this battery. Hydrogen is not a great power source, but of the options that I have, since I'm still working on super sustainable, it is probably the best one I got. So I can't use natural gas, can't use petroleum, can't use wood, I can't use coal. We're at 92, so we have 150k to go, but it's taken us 180 cycles to get... 92, so unless we really ramp up our power, which we're, we're trying to, it's going to take at least another 100 cycles to get super sustainable done. What I can do once I get the enough power in the grid so that it's grids running is I could disable the automation on one of these and just let it run full tilt whether I need the power or not because I already am setting up the automation to make it so it won't pull more hydrogen than we have available because basically this room has stored all my hydrogen I'm going to set it up so that this sensor only lets this go through when I have more than a, more than a thousand grams of hydrogen stored in that room. Let's get rid of this pipe. So need to see that much oxygen on the spot.
I'm going to get this automation done rather quickly so that I can get make sure that when I start this hydrogen plant up, I'm not using too much hydrogen. The last thing I want to do is pull the hydrogen too far out of this room so that the room starts to overheat because then my oxygen production will suffer. And so we will send a green signal if the ambient pressure is above 999 kilograms. So just need that power wire. This will start pumping. Oh, why did I put a hydro sensor in? Oh, I'm such a dumb. So it's a green signal if above 999. All right, so hydrogen is coming up here, but these can't run yet until they have somewhere for the power to go. So let's finish out this construction. Let's echo stretch. Come on. Move your butt. Move your butt, Maxine. Hydrogen is stockpiling pretty well. Still getting quite an excess, which means I can probably run this whole place for a while anyway. We're going to use copper in here.
Give me a breath, Maxine. Pick a spot and sit down. I know, I've been streaming for a long time, so you haven't had any attention. I'll be done pretty soon. I want to get to cycle 200 and then I'm calling it a night. I'm going to set this to 90 and 10 because I want it to run so the network is almost full of power, but not all the way because then I'll be wasting some power. And the same with the bottom. I don't want to have any brownouts, so I set it to 10. That way it kicks on before the power kicks out. Pretty standard stuff. Few more pieces of wire and this power system will be connected to a grid one more to go go on who's gonna finish it oh it's gunder in for the win Celebrating by killing my Dreco. Okay, so these are set up as 100 and 0. That's not. Well, that's that's silly. These I want to go till 90. But I don't want them to kick on at 10. I want them to kick on. Actually, I want these to kick on at 10. Is that these are like my last ditch effort this one i want to make 20 for now so the idea is that when the power starts to fail when it gets down to 20 it'll kick on the hydrogen and it won't enable these until the hydrogen runs out So yeah, when these batteries start draining, they're going to pull power from over here. And if this hits 20%, actually, let's make this 40% because I want to make sure this fires on early. I don't want these turning on. This kicks on, so this power starts increasing again, which means these will never turn on unless I'm out of hydrogen. And I will continue to use hydrogen until this room goes down to one kilogram of hydrogen. And any excess hydrogen is continually pumped into this room. So that is pretty cool. So I just freed up a, dupe, a lot of dupe power because the dupes don't need to run on treadmills anymore. At least not for a little while. The other thing that's nice is as I start expanding after I get the exosuits done, I'll set up a system to um, pick up and then filter all the gases. And any of this hydrogen that's loose around the map, I will just dump right into that room. That's what this other vent is for. So I can have a drop off for it, the hydrogen as I filter it. 
I can actually probably put that in right down here. But I want to get a power grid up and running a little better first. Now that I have power, I can start gridding it out a little bit more efficiently. But you can see things are already starting to get done because of, you know, at any given time on my schedule, I have four duplicates that are sleeping. Four, four, three, or three. So three at the least, but usually four. So when I had four duplicates running on treadmills plus four sleeping, that's it. That only leaves seven to do all the tasks of the entire base. Now I have 11 that are free to do things, which means I have greatly increase the efficiency of the base. So you can see all these things that I've been waiting to get done are getting fired up. Let's check out this achievement. So right now I'm working on two achievements that are that are like totals. So super sustainable we have been working on. We're about to hit 100k. That's pretty awesome. And then we have... Um, what's it called? I forget. Down the hatch. So down the hatch is produce 10 tons of refined metal by ranching smooth hatches. I'm already at one and a half tons. So basically these hatches, the smooth ones, whenever they eat, um, copper ore, they produce copper and gold amalgam they produce gold and that's what i have being fed in here so as they're eating i'm getting refined metal and you know i haven't been doing it for too long and i'm already at one and a half tons so i'll keep doing that till i get to 20 and then i'm going to get rid of the smooth hatches They're making some exosuit stuff. Oh, I don't have a way to get over to that station. That's why nobody started building it. So let's finish off this. I also want to queue up some decon. Deconstruct this stuff. Get it out of my way. I'm probably going to put a little reed fiber farm in under here. Uh, because reed fiber is needed to repair the exosuits. And so then I can have everything I need right here to keep that the suits running. Speaking of that, while that's being finished, I can start running this oxygen pipe up. I ran this up here to help with the construction, but mostly it was because I'm going to run this pipe all the way across the ceiling. And then it's going to drop in here and start feeding my Atmos suits. That's six, seven, eight. I'm going to shoot to get 10 of them because right now I'm, I'm never going to have more than 10 people that are up and doing things really. Actually, I could probably do 12. 12 makes more sense. I also specifically ran the oxygen the way I did. Um, it goes the whole way across the top and then down and back because that way it will feed oxygen into the one closest to the door first because sometimes it can get really screwy where they grab a they grab an atmosphere suit from this end and but when they come back in they put it on this end and so it doesn't recharge because the ones back here are the ones getting the oxygen first so if i do it this way then when they put a suit back they put it in the closest one and that's the one getting the oxygen
Okay, so we'll let that go. I need to figure out uh, getting power over here to power the Atmos suits. So I think I'm going to put in a large transformer right here. And these will all get moved later, but now that I have enough gold, actually, I'll probably just do this line with copper because I have a lot more copper. Then I can run a power line over this way. So let me think about the math here. If I have 12 suits, that's 1440. I'm going to power the door too, because I'll have enough power to do it. That's fine. 3, 6, 9, 12. And that means I'll still have enough to power this. Come on. Going to you know better than that. I was like, why is it not getting power? And they were connected to the transformer. That'll do it. Okay, so now if I supply some suits... And start adding in my atmosuit docks. Let's do these with copper. It's 12, and then I have one more suit made. So I need eight more. I'm actually going to do 10. Because then I have a couple of spares. What I will do is put a storage bin here. And this is going to be Atmos suits. Okay. 
want to make the priority on these higher because I want to make sure that these suits get delivered very quickly. But so you can see the oxygen's already filling up. And this is what I was saying about how the oxygen will come in and fill up from this direction. So the suits in the front get the oxygen first. I want to get rid of this now. How is our hydrogen? We're already down to 1300. So this power is not going to last long. But hey, got us going somewhere. Now we got duplicates at leaving the base in at those suits. Which means we can start actually closing the base up. Oh, now I have duplicates coming inside to use the bathroom in their Atmos suit. Oh my goodness. That'll fix the problem. But so until I get more suits, I don't have anybody, nobody will be able to get out of the base. But the other thing I need to worry about now is what duplicates have exosuit training? Let's just start from the top. AR does not have exosuit training, and it would cost me two more points to get it there. But I think that's worth it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say the default is you can come back in, but you can leave. AR, I will grant you access to both because you have exosuit training. Calico is also three steps away. I'm going to need to work on increasing morale here. So Calico, I will grant access to leave the base. Demon. Demon gets access to leave the base. Ender gets access to leave the base. Really pushing some of this morale, so I'm definitely going to have to work on that. But Gunder gets access to lead the base. I want to make sure Toby gets access to lead the base because she's one of my big my uh, diggers. Okay, so I think that'll be all right for now. Oh, how wild I definitely want to get access because she's the demolitionist. In case I want to destroy anything outside the base. So, and that'll be good for now. Oh, how about Way? Let's check out Way. Okay. Okay, so now people can still get out this way. So I want to lock these doors
There's a, I don't want people going out here, but also I don't want people coming back in wearing Atmos suits. If you're, if you're leave with an Atmos suit, you come back in through the dock. So now to close that wall. Eventually I'll just put a wall up there. But now that's what I'm going to do. And then I have people coming down this way to get out. So I need to put a block here. That means that only people who have access with that most suits can come over here to do any work inside the machine, which is great. That means I don't have to worry about carbon dioxide filling them up. It'll limit the number of people I have on the outside, but that's okay because they all have exosuit training and high athletics. So the people who are out will be able to do a lot more. Plus, then I don't have to worry about running out of oxygen in my exosuits. Because even though I'm producing a ton of it, I don't want to burn up, burn through all of it. Like I did with my hydrogen. So I think the next thing I want to work on is building a system down here to collect gas. Actually, I think I'm going to do one up at the top first. So let's build up. I think I'm going to end up moving this. So I want to put a ladder system, an exterior ladder system that is right outside this dock. So I want to build up, there's space, I can see the regolith already. I want to build up here and start working on clearing out at the top. That means the gases will all work their way up to the top and I can put in a system to collect any gases that make their way up there. Mostly hydrogen. The other thing that's good about the uh, restricting access to only half my duplicates being able to leave is that the tasks inside my base will now get done more efficiently because there's duplicates in there that can't go and do other things. And so first goal is get up to space so we can build a section to collect all the gas from the base. And then also, if I really need to, I can build a electrolyzer system that vents oxygen into space. But honestly, that's essentially what I have here, because it's just and the excess oxygen is just pumping in here. So these hydrogen generators are running full bore; they can't run any faster, which means I'm getting to super sustainable as fast as I can. The only way I could actually increase that is to add in more electrolyzer setup. So I could build another one of those just to produce hydrogen but that would also burn through my water twice as fast so I don't know that I'm ready to do that until I have a sustainable water source because we're already about halfway through this water that we had in here which means sooner rather than later I'm either going to have to find renewable water or start filtering the polluted water into regular water I was hoping to do it, that this would last me until I got um, coolant set up, because then I can set up a boiler to boil off the water rather than wasting sand. But we'll see. I guess what I could also do is build this ladder downwards so that I have like one main ladder along the base. So then I'll have like the internal ladders in here and then these this will be the main one that goes through the map, which this is a pretty good spot for it. I like it kind of in the middle of the base or the middle of the asteroid, I mean. So that's working out well.
up to, up to three. We're trucking along on the smooth hatch front. So the issue with the smooth hatches is that let's let's pull one up so I can show. When the smooth hatch eats copper ore, you get 75 kilograms back. So you get 75% of it. When you do this recipe, you only get 50% back, but you get 50% of sand back. So basically you're crushing the ore, half of it becomes sand. But when you do the metal refiner recipe for refined metals, you get 100% back. So this is a better option than this, but it's not the best option. If that makes sense. But so for now, well, I'm going to leave these seven smooth hatches once I get them all groomed up. And I'll keep... Let's remove these a while. Let's put in regular stone hatches again. Um, it'll keep... I'll have two of these that'll keep this population up high. So that when I need refined metals, I can just pick which one I want and put it in there. And I can get it kind of passively rather than wasting duplicates doing it. So actually I can get rid of this rock crusher now. We will put one of those back in once we get an industrial area where we have heat control. But we have to get into the oil biome before we can do that. Okay, so I don't want to dig up into the regolith yet. Because that'll expose us to space. I'm not quite ready for that yet. Eleven more cycles to go and we hit the 200 mark. That was where I wanted to stop for the night. And I probably will, because I've been going for almost seven hours now. Okay, so I made it all the way up. Let's. I want to stick with my four wide scaffolding. So let's mark that the whole way up. I 
main reason I'm going to the top, other than the fact that I want to have access to space and that I want to find shovels to make a shovel farm, is that as I clear the map, if you do it from the top to the bottom, then all the items fall to the bottom. And you don't, you can just have one big area to sweep instead of sweeping everything. So that's what I like to do. I get myself up to the top, I work my way to both sides, and then I slowly eat away at the map, jump by jump. Okay, so... Cross that way. And then this way. And the main reason I'm working my way down to the bottom is so I can find the oil biome so that I can get into refined metals and plastics because I need to get steel so that I can start doing coolant and plastics so I can make steam turbines because that's what really opens this game up. Okay. So, so far I have found two natural gas geysers. I know I found another one over here that I don't remember what it was. Oh, there was a steam vent somewhere. It's right here. Steam vent. And then I think that there was like an aluminum one somewhere. Though I am not sure. Let's see. What's this one? I'm going to use the super cheaty method to figure out what the geyser is. Aluminum Volcano, that's the one I was thinking of. So that's good, at least we have one refined metal volcano. Still have yet to find any kind of water geyser other than that steam vent. Not the best. But we'll see what we find as we go. Oh, they're running on power. Yeah, I think that hydrogen did run out quick. So it's still burning it whenever it comes in, but... Ooh, I got a water building up in there. What's that from? Water's not coming in too cold, is it? No, it's coming in at 26. We could actually heat that up quite a bit. Oh, I'm starting to get some body temperature, so I may actually want to do that. So before you have ways to actively cool water, good trick when you have an issue where you're starting to get into heating issues is any water that goes into your electrolyzer is going to produce hot oxygen no matter what temperature you put it in all the way up to like 70 degrees so 
if you want to use some radiant piping to soak up some heat from your areas before you get it into the before you get into the electrolyzer it's like free cooling so let's research some radiant pipes because then I can just circle cycle some radiant pipes through my crop area and do some radiant cooling But so basically, this water is at 25 degrees. I'll run it through here. This area is at 30. So it'll pick up a couple of degrees of temperature in the water. And then when the water goes into the electrolyzer, it will give out the same amount, the same temperature of oxygen either way, the 60 degree oxygen. So it doesn't matter how much temperature I picked up in that water. In fact, we could look at, I didn't do any kind of that when I was building this because I was just trying to get it up and running. There's a lot of heat in here. So if I took the the um, liquid pipes and just did a radiant loop through here, that would help too. Because that would help to cool down this whole area. And since all the gas runs through here, Keeping this area cool would be helpful. So I'll work on that too. There's a geyser. Come on, water. Yeah, cool slush. Cool slush geyser is excellent. That'll provide me with a ton of water. So that'll be a project to work on soon. works out pretty well because I think that this area down here is where I'm going to empty all my polluted water into so I can just open that up and let it flow into that water for the time being and then eventually I'll cap it off so that I can get a nice good flow out of it We're getting almost to the 200 cycle mark. We started at 100 today. So let's kind of do a recap of our, our achievements. We got quite a few during the last 100 cycles. Uh, let's just look through the ones that we still have to do. The space race... Um, for me, is going to be a challenge. I've actually never built a rocket in this game yet. I still need to learn how to do that. The research tree goes hand in hand with space race because you need to get to space to get all the research done. This is actually pretty achievable. I might actually have enough to do that now. But basically all you have to do is put duplicates in fancy clothing. If I don't have enough of them, I can... Uh, craft them so critterus for is is going to be a long-term project yeah, it's taming every uh default critter some of them i've done before some of them i haven't pakus i've done slicksters i definitely want to get into once i get to the oil biome uh the shovels i already know how i'm going to do that um dracos i need to learn how to do that a bunch of different ones 
building the nature reserves is something I'm going to do late game because I'm going to end up creating some natural tiles rather than trying to preserve them. This one I'll get to once I get to another asteroid. Well, probably right before. I'd like to get to 20 on this asteroid, and then I'll send a few of them out to another asteroid. Gas Emu is a space achievement. Um, this one we need definitely need to get cooling in order to cool down a building that cold. Super sustainable. We're about halfway through. Transit tube will be a fun one to do, but we need to get to radiation material research before we can do that. Still have a few rooms to build for this one, but that one's doable for sure. This one just takes time. We're 191 cycles. We gotta go till 365. Oil biome one we could probably get done before the end of this stream. Curing a duplicate's not too bad. I just have to set up a doctor's station. This one is uh, just a matter of getting enough refined metal over there. I already have a power uh, uh, station there to tune the hydrogen generators. We're about halfway through revealing the whole map. This one we've been working on today. We're halfway through getting to that. This is something that just comes along while you're working on space. Once you put up a bunker door, a meteor will hit it. This one will uh, happen along the course of us just playing because we will start using more auto sweepers than duplicates. So. This one, this one also will come uh, in, in time once we have duplicates all going outside of the base in exosuits. And then these are all DLC achievements that I'm not going to get into quite yet. We will do them all, though. So, yeah, we're trucking along through them. So the next step, next uh, I do on this map will be a YouTube episode. I'm probably going to make at least at least one episode, maybe two, that is focused around setting up uh, plastic production and uh, steel and getting aqua tuner and steam turbine based cooling systems up and running. And then I'll probably do another one where I work on getting sustainable water set up. So we have quite a few projects in the works, but my goal, at least for a little while, is to do YouTube episodes pretty regularly and then do a stream maybe once once every couple of weeks to get through some of the more grindy stuff. But we'll see how it goes. I do plan on putting all the streams up on YouTube as well for people to re-watch if they want to. And doing like a recap episode for people that don't want to do all that. I know, Maxine. You want me to be done streaming. I know. Almost done. Almost. Please move over to the side. Thank you.
crack over this way. Quite a map. Quite a lot to do on here. I don't want to go too much further this way until I move this water down. Because I don't want to flood my base. But we will have... This is where we're going to have the water collecting. Because I think this is... Oh no, that's a bleach stone biome. So we're not quite down at the bottom yet. But I promise. That's the one we already looked at. I'm just kind of peeking around to see what uh, geysers are on the map. There's another saltwater one. That's good. So that's another option for water. It's nice to have them kind of right near each other like that. I can set up all my water processing in this corner of the map. Probably put in another fridge if I'm going to keep making food. I just need to get through till I get to an oil biome and then I can set up a deep freezer. So it's okay if I lose some. Not a big deal. It's mostly the pickled meal that I have anyway. Once we get the shovels, well, I will probably set the their that the ranch up for that up at the top of the map because they'll be um, eating the regolith that I get from space. Let's do another research while we're finishing up here. Let's just do a simple one.
So if I break that, it's going to go down here. Yeah, I'm not quite ready to send it down because I have all these doors open. Let's build a thermal wall along the, the fire base. It goes up like this. And then we will dig out. Like that. That way we can start thermoregulating the base once we have the means to do so. So what I will probably do is work my way over so that I can get to this corner of the base or the map, I mean, the asteroid, and I will set up a, a system over here to collect all the hydrogen as it works its way up to this corner of the map. And then I'll do the same down in the bottom left corner to collect all the heavy air gases. And I will sort them and send them off to their storage. I already have oxygen or hydrogen storage set up. I'm not sure where I want to put the, the natural gas. Probably over on this side next to this one. And then I will just set up a collection system here to pump it into the storage. And then I'll set up the natural gas power right up here next to the hydrogen power. That makes sense. Oh, that's right. I dug that out to get the algae so that I can keep the oxygen going for a little while longer. I was like, I don't remember digging that out. Who did that? This wall that I'm building here is kind of temporary because I think I'm going to keep the stables inside the base. And this is the side wall of the stable. So I'll pull the doors out and then move the wall in. And then get rid of the second wall. Or I might just double layer it. We'll see how I'm feeling at the time. Either way, it's not difficult. While I don't plan on keeping these stables as a primary food source once I get the shovels running, I do want to use them to do some uh, farming of different critters and their morphs as we go on. So I do want to do the achievement where you raise each one of them, but I also would like to do at least one round of doing each of the morphs to just to try to figure them out a little better because there's a lot more morphs and mutations in the DLC. Then as an added benefit, this would mean that I have a nice wide tunnel coming down here and I can drop all that water down.
Oop, I cracked open that. I don't really want to do that right yet. I don't mind a little gasket now, but I don't want it to be open. I mean, if I could use that gas, that'd be great. But I can't yet. Yeah, a little more than halfway there. We were at 30,000 when we started the stream today, so probably won't be too far to get to that being finished. Then we can really crack this map open. I think we're already starting to get some hydrogen collecting up here. So that's good. Harvest all that a little later. That is going to be too high up, and if I keep digging left that way, I'm going to hit space. So let's dig down the next row after that. So I don't want to dig out too much of the abyssalite layer between me and space. So let's leave all this actually. And this, for now, let's do it like that. I don't mind cracking open into space, but I don't want to have the regolith come in just yet. Soon. But, not yet. Okay, so that's going up there. Let's check down here and see what's going on.
almost down at the bottom of the map, I think. Maybe not. Going to extend this wall down. Put a wall over here. Kind of had a plan to do liquid processing in this corner of the map. Or the base, I mean. So I was going to set it up so that brine, salt water, polluted water goes in here. This is mostly water because I was throwing all the liquefiables in there. Which is fine. No big deal. It's just... Might as well seal this part in. Oh, somebody's trapped. There you go, hog wild. And I'll bring the thermal over. I don't mind if I lose a little liquid. Okay, so let's dig out all of this. And all of this. So quite a bit of oxygen. Still have some excess hydrogen burning off. But mostly we're still running on duplicate power. I'm going to put a thermal wall around an insulated wall the whole way around the base, except I'm going to leave the bottom of these stairwells um, as mesh tiles so that gases can get down here for now. Pretty easy and around about to get over here, but... Once this is done, I will build a walkway over across the bottom of the base just to help my duplicates outside get around. Where do we have the research? Let's do this one next. That's fine. I was working on putting in radiant piping here.
guess for now I can just put in regular pipe until I have more refined metals done. And then I can always change them. Looks like we're almost at cycle 200. I think I'll finish this little project here and then call it a day once we hit cycle 200. It's been a long stream. It's been fun. Got a lot done. I'm just making my way through there. I'll just look down here. Yeah, sea oil. Alright, so we're not going to dig it through this level because that's the oil level there. This abyssalite's going to be hot. Maybe not. But still. I'm not breaking into the oil yet. Not until I get the water all collected somewhere. Can, however, go over this way so that I can make a little collection pool so I can let the water drip down from space. Still digging up.
Oh, I see. A bunch of eggs fell down here. That's how these are in here. I was wondering where they came from. Gonna have to change up this uh, evolution chamber if I'm gonna use it to kill the uh, flying critters and stuff. Is there in there? Let's see what that is. Another cool steam vent. Make something out of that, I'm sure. But I do have to be careful when I'm digging in here to not crack it open. I don't want to get steam in my oil biome until I have it tamed. <clears throat> All right, back to this project here. All right, ran out of refined metals. So let's do, let's connect it up with regular plumbing for now. I'll change that for radiant pipe when I have it. Right. So, water's coming through here, 26 degrees. Let's see how much heat it can pick up off these plants. It's up to 27. I'm not going to pick up too much now because I don't have any radiant pipes down here. It's also not a ton of heat to pick up here, but I'm hoping that I can at least cool this down to 26 in this area. And again, it was mostly just because I have the capacity to dump some heat into the electrolyzers for free. Okay, so that'll keep running. This corner is almost finished. What I should do, while well, I have just a little bit more time, is set up a little system here. What kind of power do I got? It's 1800, 1900. That's my other line there. I think I'd have to run another power line. This uses what? How much power? Hundred and twenty. I can I can get away with that. Um then I'm gonna put a pump down here.
Oh, that's not a regular plate. Okay, so as far as the power goes, I can cut out that door because I don't need that to be powered. Because I need power to come over this way and get this liquid pump. But that's still going to put me slightly over the power limit. And so I'm going to shorten this by one. I'm just going to get rid of the whole thing. Yeah, so another 240 will make that 1920. So I can always add that back in later if I want to. But for now, I'm going to take it off. So now I have water going into here. Let's set this to a higher priority, like seven. Put a base, a storage bin next to it. Cool. Now we now we can start turning all this polluted water into regular water because I'm running very low on water. And I want to put on hydro sensor just to make sure that this shuts off if it were to fill up, if I'm not paying attention. So this is send a green signal if you're below 500 kilograms. So once 500 kilograms of water gets up to that top level, bam, shuts off. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted. Get rid of all these blocks. Those were there while I put in the air tiles and stuff. There we go. All right, so now we can process all that water there for the time being. That'll buy us another couple hundred cycles of oxygen, to be honest. And the fact of the matter is, is this is overproducing oxygen. So I'm already at 500 kilograms per tile here. So even if I ran out of water, this would keep pumping out oxygen to keep the base alive for quite a while while I fix the problem. Mm -hmm. What I should do is move this whole water tank over closer to here, but can't be fussed with that right now. We have the teleporter here so we can go exploring. 
next time we play if we want it. That's another project to work on. But I believe to end the stream, I'm going to crack open this water tank and let it flow down into the bottom of the map. So I hope you had fun watching. That I'll have the stream up on YouTube. Though I doubt you know anybody's gonna want to watch rewatch an eight-hour stream. It'll be there in case people do. I'll probably break it into a few videos, and then I'll do a recap for the YouTube series so that people know where we were. That's gonna flow down there, and then it's gonna flow all the way down this elevator shaft. Down into the cold biome. Flood this whole area. Sure is. It's all the way down to the bottom of the map. Trying to get everything to collect down at the bottom because I want to clear out the top of the map first so that as I clear out the blocks, they all fall down instead of having to collect them all from the top. Plus, I want to get the hydrogen to collect all at the top so I can start to harvest that. Welcome to the stream, by the way. Afraid you're catching me right at the end of a long stream. Yeah, I prefer to do it from the top to the bottom because then, and I'm sure you know this, but as the as you dig it out, all the stuff falls down to the next level. And then when you're done, all you have to do is sweep up one level of stuff. You don't have stuff on top of all the things you built as you worked your way up. So, I've finished the, I've gotten the base to a sustainable level. I have food going, I have oxygen going. And so really my next task is clearing everything out. But anyway, thanks for joining. We're almost at eight hours of streaming, so I've really got to call it a day. I still have some work I got to do tomorrow. Um, I am doing a series on YouTube. If you want to check it out? My YouTube name is the same as my Twitch name, and uh, I tend to do a stream at least you know once every couple of weeks on oxygen not included. So keep an eye out for that. But I will find somebody to raid here real quick. We'll call it an end for a hard night.